all are concerned for the future of America. And a question may come to our mind, what will happen to our next generation? This has been constantly in my mind and my prayer for the last eight years. So let us look into the Word of God in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 11 and hear how God spoke to the Israelites concerning the next generation. And this, I hope it's in on the twin. And this is an important part of the instructions God gave to Moses for his people. After he gave the Ten Commandment, and it was uh, about two months after they left Egypt and arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. Deuteronomy 11, verses 1 through 7. You must love the Lord your God and always obey his requirements, decrees, regulations, and commands. Keep in mind that I am not talking now to your children who have never experienced the discipline of the Lord your God or seen his greatness and his strong hand and powerful arm. They didn't see the miraculous signs and wonders he performed in Egypt against Pharaoh and all his <laughs> land. They didn't see what the Lord did to the armies of Egypt and to their horses and chariots how he drowned them in the Red Sea as they were chasing you. He destroyed them, and they have not recovered to this very day. Your children didn't see how the Lord cared for you in the wilderness until you arrived here. They didn't see what he did to Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, a descendant of Reuben, when the earth opened its mouth in the Israelite camp and swallowed them, along with their households and tents and every living thing that belonged to them. But you have seen the Lord perform all these mighty deeds with your own eyes. So it is clear that the message was about God <clears throat> spoke uh, to the Israel uh, concerning the next gen generation. It is more for us, the older generation, especially those who were born in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s and 50s. Our next generation had not seen what God has done for America in the past, as we have seen. And I assume that this group is about up to 40 and on the 40s. They did not witness the mighty hand of God, his great love and care for our nation in the past. Just like the people, uh, the children of Israelites, they, um, they, did, they had not seen what God had done for their land. I came to America in 1970, and I enjoyed a glimpse of God's glory in this great nation. I saw a huge difference between America and the country I came from. Not just abundance of material blessings, but culturally and spiritually, this nation has much higher standard than all the countries that I had visited before. Recently, I read a story of a president of South America who told an American preacher that he had discovered the root of the difference between America and his nation. He said, our ancestors came to this shore to look for gold, but your ancestors came looking for God. And this is a profound difference. And God graciously helped our founding fathers to build this nation on the biblical principles. And they built this nation 
this foundation, godly foundation on their knees. His story has revealed to us that they were men and women of prayer. And the Bible was the guide of their governance. I was in tears when I read the foundation of American government. I found a deep sense of humility in the founding fathers. And I pray, I have prayed that God would restore this virtue of humility back to America, to the nation. And now I long to see that our next generation would be the people who are humble, walk humbly before God. Moreover, that the, these be, the, our founding father, they were men and women who fear the Lord. They fear God for His great love and mercy. They fear God because He is always right in all His judgments. But where is the fear of the Lord in this nation today? In my first years in America, I enjoyed the godly atmosphere in this nation. But after 1980s, I began to notice a downfall of America's moral life that is slowly and steadily gripping this lovely land. I painfully watch it year after year until nine, the end of 1990, the beginning of 1991. God called me to set aside from my, from the measure of my church activities and from my part-time job to be an, a full-time intercessor for the revival of America. Few years after that, I met Alita Hinton, and ever since, we became prayer partners without a break, even how far I got from America. And we focus on our prayer regularly, crying out for the revival of the church and the revival of the nation. At that time, Come to the Fire had not existed. During those years, I read several books on revival. And one of them was America is Too Young to Die, written by Raven Hill. And he told us that all revival begins with prayer, intensely prayer, with, along with fasting. Before I go further, let us look um, into one verse in Judges chapter 2, verse 10. After that generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. We read Deuteronomy earlier, and we found that the children of Israelites had not seen what God had done for their nation in the past. Our children today, from childhood up to 40 and on the 40s, they had not seen God's mighty hand the, the, he, and yet, they had not seen the mighty hand of God in the life of the founding fathers. They had not seen their obedience, their love and devotion for God. 
as I saw a little in um, 1970, when I first landed from the pagan country. But what do our young people see today? All they see is a life of convenience, comfort, and an idolatry of materialism. Materialism has become the shrine of our today's focus. And unfortunately, this young generation grew up with a materialistic minded and with self-sufficiency. And what do they see in the churches? They see the spirit of religion. They see the spirit of legalism and tradition. I'm talking in general. And how does this young generation react to all this? Even the sacrifices of innocent lives seem to be normal to them. And they look at it with indifference and with a cold attitude. Moreover, thousands of our young adults and teenagers have given themselves to the destruction of their bodies. The body God created for his own glory. The body is God meant to be a, his sanctuary, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. They give their body to sexual impurities in many forms, to addiction, to drugs, to foods, to drink, to violence. And several of them even cut themselves with knives, just to express the inner hurt, to to release the deep angry inside of them. The suicide rate over our young generation is increasing every year. Even the meaning of marriage has been distorted and be so acceptable in the public square. We have lost the fear of the Lord as a nation. Jeremiah cried that God has withdrawn his right hand at the approach of the enemies. Yes, God has withdrawn his protection from our nation. And we see every day, we hear every, we hear every year. I mean, every, every day we see with our eyes, we hear with our ear that how freely the enemy come and attack our nation and our, even in our midst. So our nation has become a target of the enemies. Even the children in, the ch in, our, in the churches, in the body of Christ, have been found among them. Not just the unbelievers. They have conformed themselves into the worldly standard. I have interviewed several young adults and teenagers who are regularly attending the church and very active in the church. And I found out that 
majority of them are not really hungry for the word of God. They don't have the habit of reading the word and praying. So they are without the personal intimate relationship with Jesus through his word. Some of them have confessed to me that they feel dry and empty. So, these good young people in the church seem to find satisfaction in the service of the law than in the law himself. Unfortunately, they, de they are deprived from the nourishment of their being, nourishment of their soul. So what is left? Besides all this, quite a few young people inside and outside the church are like people wandering in the wilderness, growing without a purpose. I often receive email and phone calls from women who cry out with me for their children, young adults and teenagers. They don't know what to do with their lives. As if they're ready to give up. Jeremiah was weeping. The roads to Jerusalem are in mourning. Her women are crying bitterly because the enemies prosper and her children have been captured and taken away to far away land. <coughs> Is this the future of America? Are you desperate? As God is desperate for our land, let us hear one more time the desperation that God had expressed in a truth, the prophet Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. I look for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I search for someone who stands in the gap, in the wall, so I would not have to destroy the land. But I found no one. Has God found you yet? Are you willing to stand in the gap for this dying nation? America is too young to die. Yes, yes. Are you willing to stand in the gap for the young people who rise up from their hopelessness? Oh, may we hear the heartbeat of God for the nations. Now let us hear how God expressed himself so desperately to Moses and how Moses responded to him. Deuteronomy 9 verses 13 and 14. The Lord also said to me, I have seen how stubborn and rebellious these people are. Leave me alone so I may destroy them and erase their name from under heaven. Then I will make a mighty nation of your descendants, a nation, nation larger and more powerful than they are. Then, as before, I threw myself down before the Lord for 40 days and nights. I ate no bread and drank no water because of the great sin you had committed by doing what the Lord hated, provoking him to anger. I feared that the furious anger of the Lord, which turned him against you, would drive him to destroy you. But again, he listened to me. I prayed to the Lord and said, 
O oh, sovereign Lord, do not destroy them. They are your own people. They are your special possession, whom you redeemed from Egypt by your mighty power and your strong hand. Please overlook the stubbornness and the awful sin of these people, and remember instead your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you destroy these people, the Egyptians will say, the Israelites died because the Lord wasn't able to bring them to the land he had promised to give them. Or they might say, he destroyed them because he hated them. He deliberately took them into the wilderness to slaughter them. But they are your people and your special possession whom you brought out of Egypt by your great strength and powerful arm. Arise, cry out in the night as the watches of the night begin. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hand to him for the life of your children who faint from hunger at the head of every street. Do you hear the agony of the Savior in the garden, in the dark night of Gethsemane, how he needed his followers to stay awake with him. He pleaded, get up and pray. Why are you sleeping? So that you don't give in to temptation. And the Bible said that Jesus Pray so fervently and in such agony in spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like drops of blood. We cannot pray the way that we have been praying. You've got to change the life, the life of prayer for our nation and for the nations around us. Lately, I see several women around me change the way they pray. They focus more on the word of God, the promise of God. Because we run out of what we would, we should pray. We cannot continue with our cold prayer and cold attitude. What will be, will be. No! The will of God had to be done. And his kingdom had to come to us, to the church, as it is in heaven. Moses did not leave God alone. Why? Because he knew the heart of God. He knew that God wanted, longed to restore his people. He wanted to revive the nation. We are thankful that um, there are several groups of men and women gather regularly uh, for conference calls across the land. And um, there is a, a growing movement of prayer on repentance in, on our na- in our nation. But What about our own churches? God placed us there as watchmen of the wall. Most of our young people do not see that prayer is the priority of the church. That's why they don't pray. All they see is the church full of programs, and activities. The early church in the book of Acts was very active in reaching out to the lost and reaching out to the poor and the broken. But prayer was always their priority. If you read through the book of Acts, especially in the first 16 chapters, you will see the prayer saturated in the life of the church and how the, the mighty power of the Holy Spirit evidently moving among them. And the gospel of Jesus spreading from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and the end of the earth. Do our young people 
see this mighty moving of the Holy Spirit in our church today? Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, thus said the Lord. Now I want to share with you a quote I read from the 40 Days Prayer Guide recently by David Butts. I hope it's there. Is there? Okay. Our nation, our nation does not know it, but America needs the church. Not just a bunch of good deed doers, but as those who give direction and preserve and protect the present. We have not done well, but that is a place God put us. In other words, we the church is supposed to be the light to guide our land. But unfortunately, the light of Jesus in many churches has grown dim. And in some churches it's gone out. We have heard his voice this morning. We must rise up and earnestly pray for our next generation besides telling them and teaching them and exemplify our life to them. We, let us rise up from our complacency, from our comfort, from our selfishness, from our own ways and from our own pleasures for the sake of the next generation which is the future of America. We must intensely pray for them until they rise up to rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards our land from further damage of the enemies. And we must pray until they are able to bring back the godly heritage of America. that God endowed us with for the fulfillment of his kingdom on earth. Arise, cry out in the night for the young people. And they, before these young people can rise up to do all this challenge, they need Jesus. They need to open their heart to the gospel of Jesus and enter into the intimate relationship with him. And they must love God more than the things God gave them. Arise, cry out in the night as the watchet of the night begins. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hand to him for the life of your children who went from hunger at the head of every street. Because I love Zion, I will not keep still. Because my heart yearns for Jerusalem, I cannot remain quiet. I will not stop crying for her. I will not stop crying for America, until her righteousness shine like the dawn, <coughs> and her salvation blazes like a burning torch. Yeah. I just want you to have a little quiet moment and reflect on what you hear and what you would like to say to God. It just take about a few moments. I had planned that after this message that I would ask you to form into groups and cry out to the Lord like I used to do in the previous years. But one night, God woke me up about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning with Psalm 102 in my mind. 
and I was fully awake and find out what is it for. And I got up and read through the psalm, Psalm 102. And I found out that this is the perfect psalm to pray. It's a prayer for the nation and for the younger generation. And I realized that God wants us to light our prayers with his desires. And his desire is already written down in the Bible. So I feel that God wants me, instead of asking you to pray, God wants me to pray the psalm. And the psalm had 28 verses, and I have it printed out here. And um, I would pray um, the, the, whole, the whole psalm uh, verse by verse. And they all blended with all the scriptures in the Bible. So to make our prayer more effective and to bring a sacrifice and aroma to God, pleasing to him and satisfy his heart. So to make our, our prayer, this is community prayer. I just present you to voice out the prayer, but you need to agree with me in the word of God. And and um, make it make our prayer earnest that I would ask you, if you don't mind, to stand on your feet during the time I pray. And um, if you want to kneel down on the altar or kneel down, whatever, uh, to show God that I'm earnest, I'm praying with all my being. Not with convenience, with my own being. <clears throat> Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my plea. Don't turn away from me in my tide of distress. Bend down to listen and answer me quickly when I call to you. For my days disappear like smoke, and my bones burn like red-hot coals. My heart is sick, withered like grass, and I have lost my appetite. Because of my groaning, I am reduced to skin and bones. I am like an owl in the desert, like a little owl in a far off wilderness. I lie awake, lonely as a solitary bird on the roof. Oh, Father in heaven, this is the condition of our nation right now. We have confessed to you in this psalm that we are sick. We wither away. We are reduced to skins and bones. I want to echo the prayers of Ezra, who said, Our land is filled with corruption. We have been robbed, captured, and disgraced. All because of our sins. We are ashamed even to lift up our faces to you, because our sins are higher than our heads. And our guilt has reached to the heavens. My enemies taunt me day after day. They mock and curse me. They, I eat ashes of food. My tears run down into my drink. Oh Lord, the enemy taunt us day and night with these words. Where is your God? Where is your God? Oh Lord, remember, remember your covenant, your promises to us. Our land is full of darkness and violence. Arise, O oh God, defend your cause. We have brought to you our confession and, our, and we repent for our sin, for the healing of our nation. Because we know you are the forgiving God. You are gracious. You are compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in love. Because of your anger and wrath, for you have picked me up 
and thrown me down. My life passes as swiftly as the evening shadows. I am withering away like grass. Oh my God, we have provoked your anger, and now your wrath is upon our nation. But gracious Father, in wrath, remember mercy. Remember what you said through prophet Isaiah. You said, though I have destroyed you in my anger, but I will now have mercy on you through my grace. Thank you, Jesus. But you, O oh Lord, will sit on the throne forever. Your fame will endure to every generation. So, Lord, we look to you who sit upon the throne and to the Lamb our Savior, who sit at your right hand right now, interceding for us, until you, O oh God, make the enemies a footstool at his feet. How we love to sit at the feet of Jesus, the feet that tremble the enemies. You will arise and have mercy on Jerusalem. You will arise and mercy on America. And now is the time to pity her. Now is the time to favor her. Now is the time you promise to help. Your mercy, O oh Lord, never ceases. They are new every morning. We love to sing of your mercy, your unfailing love, O oh God. Now is the time for us to see your mercy. Your favor upon our nation, upon our government. Oh Lord, it is a time for us, the church, your bride, to seek your face, not just to seek your blessings. Because you said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then the nations will tremble before the Lord. The kings of the earth will tremble before his glory. For the Lord will rebuild Jerusalem. The Lord will rebuild America. He will appear in his glory. He will listen to the prayers of a destitute. He will not reject their pleas. Oh, Father in heaven, in order for the nations to come and bow before your glory, as you have said, oh Lord, we would like to pray along with the Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us so that your ways may be made known on earth through the church and your salvation among... No, no, not yet, not yet. <laughs> among all the nations... Um, your <laughs> salvation among the nations. Oh, Father, may our next generation be the people of praise. May our next generation be the people of a true worshippers of God. Our, next, our young generation would, be, would have passion to make disciples for Jesus and fall in love with God. Then our land will yield its harvest and the ends of the earth will fear your name. Let this be recorded for future generations so that a people not yet born will praise the Lord. Tell them the Lord looked down from his heavenly sanctuary. He looked down to earth from heaven to hear the groans of the prisoners to release from co those condemned to die. Yes, Father. We will tell our next generation that you love to hear 
our prayers so that they would run to you as their refuge in time of need. May they see, they witness how you answer our prayer so that th their faith would be strong in you. In verse 20 of this psalm saying that you hear the groans of the prisoners and release those condemned to die. And through prophet Zechariah, you said, because of the covenant I made with you, sealed with blood, I will free your prisoners from death in a waterless dungeon. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross, for the price that you paid. May our younger generation who are in captivity today will experience this power of the blood of Jesus that you have promised to set them free. And so the Lord's fame will be celebrated in Zion. His praises in Jerusalem when the multitudes gather together and kingdom come to worship the Lord. Oh, Father here in heaven, we cannot wait. We cannot wait to look forward to that day when we see a great multitude. No one could count from every nation, every tribe, every language, every people standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb, singing hallelujah, worshiping you. Salvation belongs to our God and to the Lamb. He broke my strength in the middle of life. He cut things short my days. But I cried to him, Oh my God who lives forever, don't take my life when I'm so young. Oh gracious Father, America is too young to die. Do not cut off our days. Oh Jesus, you said, because I live, you will also live. And may our next generation experience it new life that Jesus gave. May they experience a new intimate relationship with Jesus. May they be hungry for the breath of life. May they treasure the word of your mouth more than they, their daily food. Long ago, you laid the foundation of the earth. You made the heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you remain forever. They will wear out like own clothing, but you will change them like a garment and discard them. But you are always the same. You live forever. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words never pass away. Oh God, to whom shall we go? You have the word of eternal life. Oh, may the bride of Jesus become alive. May the church, may, may your word become flesh in the church again. I pray. <laughs> The children of your people will live in security. Their children, children will thrive in your presence. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful promise at the end of our prayer today. That our children will live in security. Now, and they, 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 they will accept they will be established in the, your presence now in this life and through on the next generation to come. May they be conscious of your presence in their daily life. May they hear the voice of the shepherd calling them by name and they will respond to you so that they would run to you for refuge in time of need in school on campus, campuses, in marketplaces, and on the relationship. And this is my last prayer today for you, to you. Oh, I, I want to echo King David. 
May our sons flourish in their youth like well-nurtured plants. May our daughters be like graceful pillars carved to beautify a palace. May there be no enemy breaking through our walls, no going to captivities, no cries of alarm in our town square. Joyful indeed is a nation whose God is the Lord. Amen. Now let us hear the word of, of God. Uh, you may sit down and hear the word of God responded to our prayer, how he replied to our prayer. Isaiah 44, 1 through 5. But now listen to me, Jacob, my servant, Israel, my chosen one, the Lord who made you and helps you says, do not be afraid, O Jacob, my servant, O dear Israel, my chosen one, for I will pour out water to quench your thirst and to irrigate your parched fields, and I will pour out my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your children. They will thrive like watered grass, like willows on a riverbank. Some will proudly claim, I belong to the Lord. Others will say, I am a descendant of Jacob. Some will write the Lord's name on their hands and will take the name of Israel as their own.
May I invite all the younger generation who are here, both male and female, maybe boys and girls, teens, young adults, up to 40 years of age and on the 40s, would you come forward? We would like you to hear the word of God for yourself. You might tell huh. if somebody to anoint the men. Oh, yeah. Oh no, that that they, they already arranged it. Um. Oh, many, many, come, please, please come. Fill this house with the younger generation who are sanctified and anointed for the future of America. I'm so glad to see many young people in the revival meeting like this. It's not to make me more happy. First of all, you will hear the word of the Lord speaking to Joshua in the Bible. Joshua was about to go and possess the land that God promised to give them to their ancestors. And these words, the same word can apply to you today as your younger generation. Each of you is supposed to be a Joshua for God. And God is calling you to bring back the godly heritage of America. And you know it has been lost through the years. You may say, how can I do that? If you listen to the word of God, you know what he expects of you and how he helps you in your daily life to prepare yourself to be Joshua. And some of you might already be Joshua to lead your own generation like Allah. She has been Joshua. And when, um, when Allah finished her reading the word of God, the charge of, of, of God to Joshua. She wouldn't give you her own charge and she wouldn't pray as, as your representative to respond to God. And after this, each of you will be anointed with oil. And oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit upon you. We as an older generation, we want to present you as a new generation, sanctified and anointed by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim for the prison, freedom for the prisoners, and to release those from darkness. I love you. <laughs> love you. Joshua 1, 1 through 9, the Lord's charge to Joshua. After the death of Moses and the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses, wherever you set foot, you will be on land that I have given you, from the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. 
No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate them from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We have just heard from Nancy as she so beautifully proclaimed God's word to us. And now, as the younger generations, we can't only depend. We are so thankful for the prayers of the older generations. But we can't depend only on them to pray for our churches, to pray for our families, to pray for our nation. So now it's our time to be like Joshua, to meditate on God's word and obey what he has told us to do. And we must begin to fight on behalf of those who cannot fight for themselves. And we do this battling on our knees. Now the powers of darkness will resist. The enemy hates it when we get on our knees and we intercede. But we have to be like Nehemiah who said, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. Let's pray. Father, like Joshua, we have heard the charge that you have given to us, that we must step up and we have to guard our land and we have to guard our churches. We have to guard the next generation that's coming up after us. So would you change us into a people of prayer? Take away our apathy. Take away our desire only for ease and for pleasure and give us your desires. Break our heart for the things that break yours. I pray, Jesus, that you would give this generation a passion for prayer. Make us desperate for your presence, that nothing else is going to satisfy us. You are the only one who can satisfy us. You are our only hope. You are our only place of refuge. And we look to you. We long for you to come right now and fill us. Would you teach us how to pray as you did your disciples so we can stand on behalf of those that you have given us? Those around us who don't know you, we see them everywhere. So Jesus, give our eyes to see the world the way you do. And then let us come on our knees on behalf of those people. And we know that you hear us and you fill us. We lift up our souls to you. Would you teach our hands how to war so we can be effective and mighty for your kingdom. We give ourselves to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Continue to Praise his name. Continue to stand here, ladies. If you are, those who are anointing, if you'd come, those who are anointing, come make your way in front of the altar right now. And I know there's, you guys are great. Just stay here. And, and uh, those who have the anointing oil, you can come in front on the stage. It's fine. Just make your way down so it's clear. And face the, those who are anointing, face the congregation so that they can see. And just fill in quickly here. We need some on this side. Anybody who is called to anoint? And men, I know there are some men that have been asked to do that as well. Please come down right now. Okay, the men will be on this side. So if there are some men that are here, it would be, uh, it'd be wonderful if you could go to the men over here to be anointed. Uh, the men in the audience who are part of the younger generation. That would be awesome. Well, we believe God is doing this. Acts 1-8 says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, right? And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so as those who have the oil, all they're going to do, it's not all, but the power of it, they're going to they're gonna make the sign of the cross on, their, on your forehead in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then you may go back to your seat in the power that you have received, okay? And we're just going to continue. Those of us who are seated, would you just continue to be in a spirit of prayer, believing that God wants to pour out his spirit fresh and new in this moment right now we believe he's doing this right now ladies go ahead men help anoint anoint as we do this only by the cross of Jesus 
14, 13 says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. We give you our guilt and shame in Jesus' name. We give you our hurt and pain in Jesus name throw out our bitter schemes in Jesus name throw out the cursing blame in Jesus name judging eyes in Jesus name cast off our vengeful lies in Jesus name we cry for
cross of Jesus yes. Only by His holy word Only by the cross of Jesus We cry for revival Lift your voices We cry Jesus. Jesus. 